And so, for our first story that we got right over here, we are going to begin by talking about what could possibly be the most anticipated of the Disney live-action remakes that they are going to release very soon. In fact, it's going to be out in the middle of 2019, The Lion King. And one of the big reasons why this is so highly anticipated is not just because we are talking about The Lion King, which is one of the most beloved Disney animated features of all time, but also because it's going to be directed by Jon Favreau. Now, if you guys may remember, Jon Favreau actually did a surprisingly great job with the live-action remake of The Jungle Book. Usually nowadays, the, the Disney live-action remakes, they would range from decent to forgettably mediocre, or, or in some cases, they could come out as just plain bad. And some examples I could think of include Maleficent, uh, Beauty and the Beast, uh, what else is there? Alice in Wonderland, Pete's Dragon, and all that kind of stuff. Like, honestly, nowadays, people just immediately forget about it, and we're going back to remembering more the animated features that they're actually based on. But The Jungle Book, on the other hand, that actually turned out to be pretty good, almost to the levels of the original 1967 animated film. So, yeah, he really did a good job, and... So far, people are trusting him to actually do justice to a movie like The Lion King when turning it into a live-action remake. However, uh, recently there was news that came out that really did get a lot of mixed reactions and people are not really sure how to respond to it. Some people, they're actually really cool with the happy news and the one little sacrifice, people are honestly... A bit, uh, uh, they're, they're a bit upset about it. Now, what I'm talking about, I guess I'll tell you this in the form of good news and some bad news. Now, the good news is that James Earl Jones will not be the only person that's going to be coming back to this from the original animated film. Uh, apparently, Disney actually brought back Elton John and Tim Rice to do the soundtrack of the Lion King live action remake just like what they did with the original animated film. So basically they do have a role that is very similar to what Alan Menken did for the live action remake of Beauty and the Beast where he already did the original songs from the animated film and now he's coming back to see how he can give it a little bit of a big budget upgrade for the live action remake. And I guess that's what Elton John and Tim Rice are going to do. But on top of that, they also revealed that not only are they going to bring back some of the original songs, but also they will be collaborating with Beyonce in order to create a brand new original song for the credits of the film. And as you guys probably know, Beyonce is in the movie where she will be playing the role as adult Nala. So, you might be wondering, okay, that's actually really awesome. So, where's the bad news in all this? Why is it something that people might be upset about? Well, I think for this, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and read you a little quote here that Elton John said when he did a little interview with The Sun. So, uh, it says right over here, uh, they need to have a new end credits song. Yeah, I've already said that. Uh, there's going to be four of our songs in the film from the original. Can You Feel the Love Tonight, Hakuna Matata, I Just Can't Wait to Be King, and The Circle of Life. And then there will be at the end, closing song, and we've been speaking to Beyonce's people, and hopefully Tim and I and her can cook something up. Uh, that's going to be out in 2019 as well, and it will be great work with her, so we will see. So that's basically the big thing, is that apparently just four of the original songs are going to be coming out. Just Can You Feel the Love Tonight, Hakuna Matata, I Just Can't Wait to Be King, and The Circle of Life. Now, The Circle of Life, we already know that it's going to be featured in the film, since you may remember last year at the D23 Expo, uh, they actually gave audiences an exclusive preview of what the live-action remake is going to look like in the form of the Circle of Life. So, that we already know, but now I guess it's already confirmed now that we are going to have 
the Oscar winning song Can You Feel the Love Tonight, we are getting Hakuna Matata, and we are getting I Just Can't Wait to Be King. Now, if you guys are major Lion King uh, if you are Lion King fans, then you might have noticed that there is one that's actually missing. Uh, one that is actually pretty well known, but then again, I'm talking about the Lion King, so which song from there isn't popular? Uh, one popular song that's actually not in there. Did you notice which, uh, did you notice which one? Yep, it's actually Be Prepared. Now, for those of you who probably live under a rock and somehow have yet to even see The Lion King, Be Prepared is actually the villain song, where Scar is pretty much plotting his ideas and he's imagining what, what is it going to look like when he is going to dethrone Mufasa in order to become the new king of the Pride Lands and he has his hyena army to go and support him for that action. And that's basically the big thing with Be Prepared. A lot of people do remember it as not just uh, an amazing song that's in the movie, but also one of the most beloved villain songs. Like, this one is actually really up there with songs like Poor Unfortunate Soul from The Little Mermaid, uh, the Mob Song from Beauty and the Beast, and Hellfire from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. So this is actually a very beloved and very popular villain song that they got. But sadly, it doesn't look like it's actually going to be in the movie. And a lot of people seem to be very upset that it doesn't sound like The Lion King is actually going to be complete, and for some reason that there's going to be some sacrifices, including the song, Be Prepared. And personally, I do understand why people would be sad to not see Be Prepared coming from there, and I do see a lot of the cons that would actually come with it. Like, what happens if you take The Lion King and you decided to remove Be Prepared? What's going to happen? I think the main thing would actually be the fact that it would actually kind of weaken the character of Scar. Because when you do think about it, Scar doesn't necessarily offer all that much. Like sure, he managed to reach his goal of dethroning Scar, uh, dethroning Mufasa, sorry about that, and actually becoming uh, the new King of Pride Lands, but then afterwards, he doesn't really do much, like, he just becomes this whiny little brat where he thinks like, okay, I'm the king, I get to do whatever I want, and all that kind of stuff. Be Prepared is actually the scene where Scar is actually the most threatening. That's really the thing that made him one of the most memorable Disney villains out there where you do see how he is plotting, how he is kind of the alpha male of the Outlands and the alpha male of the Hyenas, why he should be someone that characters like Simba, Mufasa, Zazu, and all the others should actually fear, and how he's more of a dictator than someone that is a kind ruler like Mufasa. So that's kind of the big thing. Be Prepared really does set him up to be at his most threatening. And technically, the only other scene that I can think of where he actually really is threatening is just the part where he's um, actually doing the action of, uh, how can I put this, uh, dethroning Mufasa, like where he's got Mufasa on his claws on the cliff going, Long live the king! And that's pretty much it. I mean, sure, you got your mandatory fight at the end with Simba and stuff like that, but that's pretty much it. Like, as I said before, if you take away Be Prepared, then you're really not going to have much with Scar. He's just going to end up looking like a bit of a weak character. And uh, I, I honestly forgot right now who's going to play Scar in the live-action remake. I think it's going to be Chadwick Boseman, I believe? Um, I, I don't know, but uh, the thing is, is that he's going to have a really big role where not only is he going to try to reinvent Scar, but really try to find a way to see what can he do to really upgrade the character without the use of Be Prepared. So that's going to play a key factor. And yeah, 
Like, with Be Prepared, it is also one of the most memorable scenes in The Lion King, so it really is a bit disappointed, and I am really sad that they had to take it out, because honestly, with the technology that Jon Favreau has, it would have probably looked amazing if they made, like, the big budget live action remake version of Be Prepared, with all the steam coming out of it, with the hundreds of hyenas marching, and then you see, like, all the rocks that are rising from the ground with Scar just like pretty cool, pretty chillax, like he knows what's going on and like he feels like a mighty ruler already just by singing that song. And even with the song itself, it would have been awesome to hear like this massive upgrade with an entire giant orchestra playing. Like try to make it more extravagant than debatably what's already been done in the animated film. That would have been great to see, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're not going to get that chance. And yet, that could also be a reason why that they had to remove it. It's because, yeah, it could be too ambitious to really turn that into a live-action remake, per se, because think about it. Now, I did try to think long and hard as it uh, as to why is it that they had to completely remove Be Prepared in the first place, and I think I might know an answer, and I think I could definitely see in the perspective of the filmmakers why that had to be sacrificed, because I think the biggest thing really is the fact that we are, like, we're not talking about The Lion King. We're talking about Jon Favreau's The Lion King. And he's not going to go beat by beat with how the original animated film actually did. If that were the case, then I think it would be a lot less expensive for Disney to just re-release the movie in theaters. And technically, they've already done so in the beginning of the 2000s when they released The Lion King in 3D. So that's already been done. And the thing is with Jon Favreau, he is looking for ways to put his own print onto uh, remaking a movie that already exists. And I think the greatest example of that is if you look into his version of The Jungle Book, I think we can all agree that his version of The Jungle Book is nothing like the 1967 animated feature. And while there are some new additions into it and a lot of changes, there are also a lot of sacrifices. And if you are familiar with the animated film, then they are easily noticeable on the spot. Like, for example, Colonel Hadi is not in Jon Favreau's film. I mean, technically, yes, there are elephants in there, and they are very prominent as important figures. Like, uh, I think Bagheera even stated that the it, it's the elephants that are rumored to be the ones that created this earth and stuff like that. But the elephants, they don't really talk. You know, you don't see them acting like army people and the leader being like a general sergeant all singing like, Ten hop! Two, three, four! Da -da 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 da 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 That... And also, we don't see the vultures either. Like, if you remember in the animated film, you got a group of vultures that are supposed to be reminiscent to the Beatles. Now, they are nowhere to be found in Jon Favreau's movie. You don't see a single impersonation of the Beatles whatsoever. Or really, you don't see a bird character either. Like, not all that much in that film, come to think about it. But yeah, what I'm trying to say in here is that, of course, Jon Favreau is not going to go copy beat by beat what the an animated feature has done and has to make some sacrifices, not just onto the characters, but also onto some songs as well. Like, yeah, sure, in The Jungle Book, you do hear some verses of the original song, like you hear uh, Bare Necessities and I Want to Be Like You, and you do hear a little bit of Trust in Me in the soundtrack, especially when uh, Scarlett Johansson Ka would be appearing in the movie. But in The Lion King, that is honestly what we have to expect as well, that things are going to be a little bit different so that it could stand out as Jon Favreau's The Lion King. 
And like I said before, even though it would have been really awesome to see all the different things that they could do with Be Prepared, including uh, all the hyenas marching and all the steam coming out, like the aesthetics of the Outlands, and also the rocks rising from the ground that's carrying Scar up and some of the hyenas as well. The problem with it is that it would be way too ambitious and probably a little too expensive to go and create. Like, this would be massively hard work for the visual effects artist. Now, the reason why I say that is that if you do think about the scene of Be Prepared in the original animated film, I think we can agree that it's probably the one that is the most different from the entire rest of the film, where the aesthetics are completely different. The layout of the backgrounds are more different, like they're more sharp, they're more rigid. You know, it feels more like an uncomfortable place to be in. The colors are more different, where they emphasize a lot more on the greens, and it's a darker environment. Uh, that, and also, they are dealing with some things that are not necessarily present in the movie, like you see a whole bunch of steam, uh, you see a whole bunch of moving rocks, and all that kind of stuff. So it would be a little too complicated in order to craft that into a big budget live action film. So of course, some sacrifices had to be had to be made, and I guess that would actually be the one. Now, again, I'm not saying that okay, fine, we should accept it and move on. Honestly, it is like I said before. I do understand why fans would be a little bit upset that Be Prepared is not there. Um, honestly, in my opinion, I would have probably switched Be Prepared with I Just Can't Wait to Be King because I feel like Be Prepared. Uh, does have more of a connection to the story than something just like, I just can't wait to be king. Technically, with that one, like, Simba could just make a little dialogue saying, it was like, yeah, I just can't wait to be king. You know, just make, like, a little reference to that, and that's just pretty much it. Like, they could just dialogue their way into doing that song, and, like, in a way, it is a little bit different in terms of the aesthetics. I mean... Yeah, it is like more bright and colorful, and technically it is one of the more, well, not one of the more, but it is the more cartoony part of the movie that's a little bit more different than the rest of the film. So, honestly, in my opinion, I would have switched Be Prepared with I Just Can't Wait to Be King, but I guess uh, it's Jon Favreau's decision, it's Disney's decision, and I guess they're going to go from there. So, hopefully... That's not going to hinder on the movie too much. It's not going to weaken the character of, of Scar too much. But overall, I guess we'll just have to wait and see with how this movie is going to roll out. Now, the film is actually going to be coming out pretty soon on uh, July 19th, 2019. So, uh, I'm still going to be a bit optimistic about this one. Again, it is still Jon Favreau working on this. And if he delivers something as good as his version of The Jungle Book and do that with The Lion King, then honestly, I'm going to be satisfied.